No president, no government, and a police force without any power. There are now armed gangs in charge of the capital. Haiti is described by its residents as hell on earth. Now the call is rising for a special international force to intervene in the anarchy. CBN's Chuck Holden brings us the latest from the border of Haiti. Haiti's reputation as a failed state is growing. In January, its last 10 elected senators stepped down, leaving the Caribbean country without a functioning government. The result is anarchy as armed and violent gangs rule the streets. Jimmy Cherizier, whose street name is Barbecue, is known as Haiti's most powerful and feared gang leader. In his neighborhood, called La Saline, he's the closest thing to law these people know. Barbecue considers himself a community leader. I'm not a thief. I'm not involved in kidnapping. I'm not a rapist. I'm just carrying out a social fight to claim a better life for all the people in the world. Better known internationally as a criminal, his G9 gang took control of this Haitian fuel depot late last year while it caused even more misery in a place already described by residents as hell on earth. He says they did it to try and force change. You, in your country, if you were living in these conditions as in La Saline, if you saw the conditions in which our people are living, wouldn't you revolt? With little to no organized government, Haiti's embattled police force is virtually powerless. In January alone, 15 cops died battling the gangs. That sparked violent protests from the police themselves. We need a revolution. We need to have a bloodbath. We're in the streets to fight for our brothers and sisters who are victimized by the bandits. And we have to take to the streets every day to get what we want. The violence has forced many U.S. missions here to severely curtail work in the country. In 2019, Dr. Doug Berbella was on his 35th mission trip here when gang members shot him at a roadblock. At the time, Berbella thought his life was over. Morning. I just want to know I love you and I love you, Michael. Uh, Michael, I want you to be a pilot. Don't ever give up that dream and leave for the war. Miraculously, he's made a full recovery, although his Haiti ministry is stalled because of the situation on the ground. We're almost out of food, so we generally feed thousands of kids every day. And we can't get a shipping container from the shipping port up to the northwest. It's impossible right now. Gas stations are closed, so even if we had access to a truck and it made it through the roadblocks, we can't even buy fuel. With options dwindling, many Haitians are fleeing across their shared border with the Dominican Republic, including some of Dr. Berbella's friends. And they're in fear for their lives. Uh, they watch people get killed in front of their house in Port-au-Prince, so uh, we help them flee to the DR. Today, nearly 25% of the total population of the DR is made up of Haitians, over 2 million of whom are there illegally. What you see here is the main border crossing between Haiti and the Dominican Republic, where I'm standing. A lot of people come across here during the day to shop in this buffer zone between the two countries, and they can come and go at will if they like, but if they want to go any further into the DR, they have to have a special visa. That's getting harder and harder to obtain because there are so many illegal immigrants inside the Dominican Republic, it's become too costly for them. And they're taking a very tough stand on those illegal crossers to the point that they're actually building a wall like we see on the U.S. southern border. The United Nations recently called for military intervention in Haiti, but the U.S. has already intervened here 19 times in Haiti's history without much to show for it. For his part, Dr. Berbella says there's only one way things will improve. Apart from military intervention from another country, I would say revival. A good old-fashioned revival would be the only thing I could see that could turn this country around. From the Haitian border in the Dominican Republic, I'm Chuck Holton for CBN News. Well, I've been in disaster zones where lawlessness had broken out and literally you you know, can drive through the area, you're trying to dodge burned out vehicles, but you see these makeshift signs, looters will be shot on site as, as property owners trying to protect what is left. And the complete breakdown where there's no water, there's no sewage, there's no cell phone, there's no transportation, nothing's open, there's no job, there's no work, there's no income, all of these things combined. And when you have a failed state that Haiti clearly has, uh, there's where do you go? 
and, and what do you do? Uh, let's pray and let's pray that they have that revival and that they come to themselves and realize we need stability. Uh, we need to have the peace on earth, goodwill towards men. We need to have these things. Uh, at the same time, I think they need some kind of organized military to come in there to establish law and order. Otherwise, you're going to get this rise of warlords where armed gangs uh, want to take over and then uh, that in, of a, in and of itself creates inequalities that are just absolutely unimaginable. And it's repeated over and over and over again in history uh, where, you know, the warlord period of China after their uh, attempt at democracy failed. And then it led to communism for China. What's it going to lead to in, in Haiti? I don't know. But when uh, a strong military comes in and says, we're here for law and order, we're not here for corruption, we're not here to take over, we're here to have a transition to a civilian government, well, you might be able to see something. But first and foremost, we need revival there. We need revival right here at home in America. We need revival around the world. We need to humble ourselves and pray and ask God to heal our land. And today, let's ask him to heal.